So let's talk a little bit about how to train force with resistance or assistance. Okay, hey Milo, resistance or assistance? So, kind of two trains of thoughts on this subject throughout the history of golf, really, right? Mm -hmm. If we start as simple with something like a ball you put between your arms, right? Well, there's also Hogan's train of thought where he would put a belt around his elbows. Now, we had this discussion before this video, and there's a, I think there's a lot of questions that come up, okay? So with a belt, that keeps your arms in, right? It holds you in. It holds you in, pins you in, yeah. So what, whether you know it or not, a lot of times your subconscious starts to fight out against it. Yes, and then when you take the belt off, while if you train it every day, maybe like Hogan did, it can have a lasting result. But if you just use it, eventually, aren't your arms going to want to kind of fight out of that? If you do it wrong, yeah. So if you're feeling a tension, like mm -hmm. you're pushing against it, you'll probably push this way as you start down. Okay. If you can swing with the belt on your arms and not feel any tension, yeah. so you feel like that it's not helping you or hurting you, yes. then it could probably be beneficial. Okay. And then vice versa, if you put a ball between your arms, now you're in, your, your tension level is more inward, right? You're pushing in to keep that ball secured. For right? sure. When you take the ball away, aren't your arms going to be more apt to stay there or even work more inward? Yes, I would say for sure. Okay, so this is this is just really interesting because it, it goes into how we're trying to develop certain feels in our golf swing, right? Whether it's a ball or a belt, uh, certain training aids, but we're also going to talk about using resistant bands, which maybe you guys have seen Again, other coaches or players use where we're talking about, you know, whether it's keeping depth, right? Yeah, so often we see on video a coach pulling a player into the position mm -hmm. they want them to go into. Now, if the coach is pulling them where they want them to go, could work that the player is actually fighting that. Mm -hmm. And so they might get more of what they don't want. Yeah. So another example was if you could just take it up to the top of the backswing for me. We brought up this one is, okay, I want you to feel your, start your downswing. I'm going to hold this up for a second. Okay, so you feel your left arm move across your chest a little bit more. Yeah. But I also felt pressure down. You were fighting me. Uh -huh. So the question is, if I did that as a feel, you know, we made 10 swings with that feel, would your arms really want to stay up or would they eventually keep wanting to let go more? So I think if you do it wrong, like what I did there, mm -hmm. I actually fought into you. Right. Now, if I was doing this correctly... What I would have the player feel is I would have them feel like they turn into it and they don't put any resistance into the coach. It feels like the arms are actually going up, yes. not down. So what I could do is say vice versa here again. Backswing, I want you to feel like you're pushing into my hand in the downswing. That's totally different. Yes. Right Now you're pushing up. So I guess the question becomes, which is the right way? And... I'm not sure we have an exact answer for our viewers. I guess it kind of depends. I think it depends on what you're trying to get. I think in the beginning, both can be functional. Mm -hmm. Like if I've got a player who's tending to go like this, yeah. or when they make a backswing, their pelvis shifts this way, and then they get to the top and they're stuck over here on their right foot, mm -hmm. and they spin, it might actually be beneficial for me to take a hold of them yeah. and move them where I want them to go. Right. But over time, as they figure out how to do that, then it might be beneficial for me to fight them. It's just like working out. When you're working out and you're training a, a certain movement, you're trying to build up some strength in that movement, you're applying more and more weight resistance against mm -hmm. you, right? Yes. But on the flip side, we talked about sprinters, right? How some sprinters will run through sand, just like that, build up that resistance, build up strength. But then they'll run down a mountain as fast as they can go. Yep. Right? So again, which one is it? Because one, on one hand, they're getting an advantage. I on think the both, other hand... I think both are needed from time to time. Yeah. Because sometimes you need the resistance to make you stronger. Mm -hmm. And other times, you need to just let go and go fast. I guess the best analogy in our sport would be what you see with speed training and speed sticks. Is you have a heavier weight 
right, to build up some strength, some mass, probably slow you down, theoretically. Well, yeah, you, you, can't, <laughs> you don't swing the heavy one as fast as you swing the light one, usually. Right. And then you go back to a light one, you swing as fast as you can, right? So you, you feel your body go faster, everything's faster. So you kind of got to maybe train both and figure out what works best for you. So you have to build power, more strength, but you mm -hmm. also have to build the quick. Yes. Quick, you got to build that quickness. Yeah. Now at times when we're going to do some exercises here to talk about how to put more force, I actually think that when you're learning how to develop more force, you need resistance. Mm -hmm. But when you're learning how to move, you need guidance. Guidance, that's a good word. I like that. So let's do it. Cool. Let's show the, guy, the, the folks at home what we're talking about. All right, Milo. So I got a really light resistance band, but we're going to make it a little more taut as I get it wrapped around you. and. We're going to do a couple different exercises here. Okay. And something, again, maybe our, our viewers are, have seen at home before, okay? So let's start with the backswing. Okay. Because, okay? you know, we're, we're working on getting this right hip a little deeper, right? Getting in our bends and, and making a good turn off the ball. So we're going to make sure we get wound up and we start to recenter probably a little bit in the backswing. Yeah. And some of the pressure trace here right in your right foot what's going on with our our pressure right we kind of get into this right foot and then sort of back into the, the heel a little bit and that pushes this upper yep. center back a little bit yep. right makes so. us centers us back up and gets us wandering back to the middle yeah okay so i'm going to wrap this around you I feel like a doctor today sweet okay so let me see if i can get this set up the way i want so you can see I brought the one handle through the other, and I'm actually going to get, feel all right to you? Yep. I'm actually going to get over, we talked about doing it over here, where yeah. I'm more in line with the camera. I would say a little bit more on like that right. angle, yeah, okay. right there. So what he's going to do is, I'm not going to be pulling quite yet, and again, this is the guided way, right? So I'm going to, as he makes this backswing, I'm actually okay. going to get a little more over Start here. Start pulling me. I'm going to start to pull on this just a little bit. He's going to feel it pull his right it's hip back. It's pulling my right hip back, and it's actually starting to make my right hip go to you. So I can feel it taking me to you. Yeah. So the question becomes, if we did this for a long period of time, would you actually fight that more, maybe sway more? I don't think so. Okay. I don't... I don't think I would. So what else are you feeling here when I do this? <laughs> I'm feeling a, a bigger wind up than I normally would get. So my, my right hip feels like it's getting more around. Yeah. Pressure is going into the inside of my right foot. And I feel like it's, when you put that force on me, it's recentering me back to the middle pretty early. Pretty early, okay. So for someone who's really struggling with a sway or slide off the ball this might be a good feel yeah for sure okay so let's go the opposite side now let's do one on impact or clearing the lead side through the hitting okay. area so i'm um, you, you good yep so i feel like my force vector is in the right place <laughs> yeah, it's pulling me right, it's pulling that right, that left hip back around like that. Yeah. So I'm not pulling very hard, but it's it's helping him feel the sensation, wouldn't you say? Yeah, so it's kind of the guidance I was talking about earlier. This is a little guidance on how to move. Yeah. Is it going to make me faster? Maybe not. Yeah. Now let's talk a little bit about... Well, let's talk about the opposite. What if I was pulling you in the opposite direction, right? So let's say, let's go this way this time. So again, so for, let's do impact, okay? So I, on that one, I just pulled you that way mm -hmm. to help clear your lead side. Okay. Now I'm gonna help, I'm gonna fight you. All right, so here's one where I'm actually fighting him. Now he can't hit a golf ball because of resistance band, we know that, but this is a good way, again, an exercise where I'm resisting that hip clearance, that yeah. lead side clearance. And we see Dr. Scott Lynn uses this a lot with students when he's working with them on swing catalyst to create more force. The way he'll do it, just 
take this off for a second. He'll wrap this band. Go ahead and take that. Wrap it around this golf club I've got on my backside right here, out here on the grip. Just like this. Yeah, now go straight out. I'm up here at the top, and when I start to go, pull. And now I can really feel yeah. what it's like to use my front side to push back. Yeah. So there's definitely no guidance here. There's no help. No, this is restriction. This is more of a, a resistance. Yeah. So this is something, again, in a gym would be a great workout. You know, just like if you were doing a bicep curl, right? Um, you're, there's resistance there. So you're, resist, you, you're getting pulled against, and you've got to really open up and get deep with it. And then once you pull that resistance away, you better believe it's going to be a little easier. Oh yeah, if, if that goes away, it's going to feel like, whoa, this <laughs> wants to just go around on me. Yeah. For sure. So, two different ways to train this. We can guide, yes. or we can resist. Yeah. I think both have their place in coaching. Yeah. Let's do one more, Milo. I got another resistance band here. What kind of torture are you going to actually, put me in this time? Actually, grab the club. We're going to do the first one. I'm going to wrap this around you. For this one, because I'm guiding him, he can have the club. And I'm basically just going to sit here and just hold this and feel, he's going to feel his hips stay back because I'm helping him do that. So for you that struggle at home with coming up by your spine angle, early extension. So what are you feeling when I do this? Not a lot. I feel just <laughs> a little bit of a pullback this way. Do I need more tension? Let's see it. Now I felt a little pull back. Okay. A little more. That was good. Yeah. I try to. Can you grab one side and pull, and then pull the other? Yeah. Ooh, that felt different. <laughs> that works pretty good, actually. So this could be a little, a nice little guide to get him swinging the way we want. Other, you know, other coaches that we've seen, we kind of grab onto the belt loops, yeah. right? Uh huh. Okay, so vice versa. Now let's drop the club because you're not going to be able to swing. Okay. So if I did it this way, you're going to have to get lower. Good. You just sort of hugged yourself or made a swing. Now I feel like I have to really push back out yes. of the ground. And to me, this would be more beneficial in the long run, or at least training, especially away from the golf course. Yeah. So. I my preference is to use more resistance than guidance. I use guidance so that people can understand what they're trying to do, because a lot of people are doing the opposite. So I'm like, okay, this is guidance. This is what you're trying to do. Then once they know what to do and they can do it kind of, then we start to resist so they do it more powerfully. But yeah, I like that. So I really feel like I have to push back so I don't get ripped over onto my nose. There you go. All right, guys, well, we hope you enjoyed this video on sort of whether we want to use some tension against us, right, some resistance or assistance, guidance, right, to help us feel the motion. I think yeah. you got to experiment with both and figure out um, when and which one works, works best, right? For sure.